Hey guys, Mike Now Makes Me Realty, part of the Jots Group out here in Savannah, Georgia. And today I got James Walker from All American Realty in Fayetteville, Georgia. And he's going to be talking to us about what it's like to live in Fayetteville. How you doing, James? Good. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Why don't you tell everybody about yourself? Yeah. Um, so I live in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I've uh, been here for 35 years. Retired police officer um, with uh, 20 years, 10 months of service with the state. Um, been in real estate for about to hit six years next February 2025. Um, I'm on with, with All American Realty Group here in Fayetteville. Uh, we're a little independent brokerage. We got about seven, about seven or eight um, agents with us. So, and what got you into real estate? Um, actually, my mom did. She, she's not a realtor. She's a landlord, but she's been probably flipping homes and and renting out homes passively for the past thirty years. She probably made flipping homes before she was flipping homes before it became a show, probably. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, she she never got in real estate, but. I'd see, I could see what she's doing. And, and, um, my thought was, oh, maybe I should get my real estate license. And then, uh, you know, I, obviously I'm, I'm the only child, so I could help her with it. And then when I got into real estate, I, I liked it more than I thought it was selling and buying homes. I was like, and I still help her. Um, but I actually, you know, enjoyed it more than I thought it would. And I was more of a, at least learn the business, you know, the, the real estate side of it, uh, of how everything goes. But yeah, that's how I get into it. So, oh, cool, cool, cool. And you've been in yeah. Fayetteville ever since doing real estate, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've been there for over 35 years. And, uh, you know, my dad retired and, and retired from Fort, Fort Liberty or Fort Bragg, then Fort Liberty now uh, when I was 13. So, um, you know, I'm 51 years old. So, you know, <laughs> that's been hard for me to get a transition to these new names, right? I was yeah. in the army for 20 years and then they're like, Fort Liberty, we're like, what is that? What is Fort Liberty? And they're like, it's Fort Bragg. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I've been trying to learn, learn the terms here. Yeah, yeah, I still call it Fort Bragg. Everybody around me does too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. All right, cool, cool. Well, we're just going to get some questions about um, what it's like to live in Fayetteville. If you guys watching have any questions, put in the comment down below. James is going to watch this. Um, also, before we get started, just want to show them you guys your channel first real quick. Okay. Um, so let me show this channel. So if you're looking to move to Fayetteville, check out uh, James's channel over here, Living in Fayetteville. Can you see it, James? Yeah, I can see it. All right, cool. Yeah, so go to this channel. He can tell you all kinds. He's got a bunch of videos on um, buying a home in Fayetteville, so that's fantastic. So we're just going to get into the questions. All right. All right. So... James, what are some of the key things soldiers should know about the housing market in Fayetteville? Um, some of the key things I would say is definitely um, here we've got due diligence money and we have earnest money. And um, I know some other states, they only have usually earnest money. But we have both here, and they're, and they're kind of one and the same. Um, I'll start with due diligence money first. So basically, due diligence money is this. Let's say you're interested in a house and we go on a contract today with a house with a buyer and seller and I got the buying side on. Um, so on a, on an offer, it's going to ask for due diligence, money, earnest money. And really people ask that too. What, what's, what amount should I give? And it really depends on the market. If the house just hit the market today. I would say to make the offer stronger, you want to give, you know, a good amount of due diligence. It's been our market for, as you probably know, you know, 30, 40, 50 days, depending on, everyone's local market um you know here typically takes about we're about about 30 days 30 35 days to close on a home on average so i would advise them hey you know it's been on market a little longer let's you don't have to offer as much due diligence but let's say it's a thousand dollars in due diligence money um since so we're going to contract that thousand dollars is is given to the selling side um and immediately if you if the buyer backs out like two seconds after signing the contract and says, Hey, I changed my mind that thousand dollars or whatever amount they gave is gone. Now Oof. it is yeah, it's non-refundable. So it's, Yikes. it's a big, yeah, it's, it's a big, um, you know, turnoff for, for a lot of buyers. And I can definitely understand why, um, you know, cause you're, you know, here in North Carolina, we're buyer beware, buyer beware state, caveat emptor state, which basically means sold as is. So, Oof. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the seller of the home, doesn't have to fix anything. They have to disclose things to you, of course. Right. They say, hey, 
If the roof is leaking, hey, the roof leaks, but I, I'm not going to fix it. Or the HVAC doesn't work or whatever, if, they, if they're if they aware of these things, of course. So, you know, and I use $1,000 as just a, you know, good, easy math for sake. But um, I've seen it up to ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 of due diligence. I was during the COVID times, of course. And I've seen as, you know, but I've seen zero before COVID. So, you know, I, I you know, it, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice chunk to, you know, have to lose. Top of that, you're paying for a home inspection, three, four hundred bucks possibly, and a termite inspection, which is usually about eighty bucks. So right there, you know, you 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 lose out a lot of money, especially due diligence of a thousand bucks if you back out. But you said there's also earnest money. Yeah, there's also earnest money too. So that's due diligence money. I just explained. Earnest money is kind of the same thing, um, but it's given straight to the attorney. The attorney is the middleman to hang on to that money. So with earnest money. Same kind of concept. There's no set amount. It could be zero. It could be as high as you wanted to go. And we'll say $1,000 again, just for good and math sake and easy sake. And let's say we're in a contract, 1000 to due diligence you gave, 1000 earnest money you gave. And now that we, we're, we there's a due diligence period. And it's usually about 14, 15 days. And um, during that due diligence period, let's say on the 12th day, the buyer says, hey, I'm going to back out. Home inspection came back bad or whatever. They get to earn this money back because they backed out within due diligence period, within that time frame, which is usually 14, 15 days. If it's after that time frame, at, outside due diligence period, you now lost both your due diligence money and your earnest money. So, you know, uh -huh. I, you know yeah. So when you're talking to your realtor, make sure they're, I mean, I do it for my clients. I'm always, Making sure we're, we're, you know, if we're approaching due diligence period and there's any earnest money involved um, or any repairs we want done, I'm always like, hey, look, we're, we're you know, we need to make a decision here. Or, or if, if they're going to back out, if I know if they're not backing out, then I don't even bring it up because, you know, hey, we're, we're rocking and rolling. We're everything. They're happy with everything. Then we're good to go. But I definitely don't want them losing both their due diligence and their earnest money at all if I can avoid it. So. We're in Savannah when you're buying a home, for those that don't know. Um, we we kind of have the same thing, but it's not as prevalent, I guess, right? Because in it seems like due diligence money is normalized for you guys. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Okay. So for us, we call that option money here in Savannah. So that was when all the bidding was going crazy and people want to just have the option to have their contract taken. They would do the same thing, put $1,000 down. They'd never see that again. But the difference with you guys is that it gets credit to them. Both of it gets credit to them at the end. Yes. Yeah. Both. Okay, both okay. See, that's the difference. When we did the option money, boom, that money's gone regardless. So it doesn't go towards anything. It just says, hey, you paid $1,000 just to go under contract. So um, that's kind of the difference. But the same concept uh, with yeah. us, when we talk about due diligence period for us, our earnest money is basically wrapped up in the whole thing. We do 1% of the purchase price here. Typically, so kind of the same kind of difference, but you're saying it's normalized to give due diligence money in Fayetteville. So that's something that if you're a soldier or PCS in there or something like that, be aware that you're going to have to have that extra thousand dollars potentially. Talk to James first and he'll advise you the best way to go about that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Excellent. So he will advise you on that. Don't just give up willy nilly. OK, and talk to James. All right, here we go. So the next question. How does the proximity to Fort Liberty impact real estate trends in the area? Uh, it isn't affected too much um, from what you know the, the clients I've been talking to. Most of them are typically want to be within thirty minutes of the base, and you know Fort Liberty, Fort Bragg's a you know one of the biggest bases on the East Coast, if not the world. So a lot of soldiers that move here, they kind of know where they're going to be at. They're like, hey, I say north, south, and south, south side of the base, but or the middle. So they're like, hey. I'm working on the south side or vice versa. So typically they're like, hey, I, I need to be, you know, I want to be on this side. And some are like, they don't care as long as we're within 30 minutes of the of of, of the base itself. Um, once they get on base, they're like, you know, I'll just cruise on base and get to where I got to go. But I would say 60, 70% are, are usually always here 30 minutes or less of the base. That's what I hear. Just to the base. It doesn't matter what part yeah. of the base. Yeah. And then the other 30% is kind of scattered. It's some want to be, Within the rock, you know, rock throwing distance of the base, and others want to be as far as away as they can from the base. Um, so you know, but but I would not not. It's usually not a big big deal. Um, you got those few that 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 want it, and you know that's you know it is what it is, and that's what they want. That's what they want. But um, yeah, I, right. I don't 
I, I, I hardly ever see anybody make, make it too big of a deal out of it. Okay. Yeah. Here, kind of the same thing. I mean, you know, sometimes that would be the case. Soldiers want to be really close to the base. Some don't want to be close to the base. So when the first sergeant calls them, they're like, ah, I'm like an hour away. I can't, yeah. I can't come in top. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally get that. We got uh, traffic patterns in our area are, are getting really bad. What is traffic like around the base? Um, it's not too bad. We, we've got, um, a new highway coming in or outer, we call it the outer, it's called the outer loop, 295 outer loop. So it, it, it's, it's connecting, you know, all our suburbs and, um, you know, fables, we're about, fables a medium sized city. We've got about 200 and 20, 230,000 people in the city of Fayetteville city limits. We're in oh, Cumberland wow, okay. County. Yeah. So I, when I say, you know, North, South, East, that's why uh, cops coming at me, but you know, you know, from north side to the south side of, of Fayetteville, you're probably looking about a 30 minute drive through through the city, um, possibly. So, 295 is making it a lot easier with that. Um, and, and then we got All American Freeway, which leads you right to the base. Um, okay. So, I would say, I mean, you've it's nothing like compared to, you know, I don't know the traffic in Savannah, but you know, um, it's it's not too bad. I don't think, um, you know. It, you know, with soldiers getting up early in the morning, going to PT, come back right. home, you know, get, and you know, you've got that time, and that's about it. But I would say, for the most part, um, it's nothing where you're sitting in traffic for hours and hours, or you know, anything like that. It's it's not, in my opinion, it's not too bad at all. So okay, well, that's cool because we uh, it's been so we had such an explosion in uh, growth um, in the past three or four years. It's been crazy. And then it's just changed up the traffic patterns. They've been knocking down all the trees, just building houses like crazy. And then they didn't think about the roads until after the fact. <laughs> and it's a, it can turn to chaos at certain times. Obviously I think, you know, I'm complaining about our traffic. I've been to New York and it's way worse than this, but oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been here since 2002 and it's just all of a sudden the traffic came out of nowhere. So it's like, what the heck? So uh, what are you going to do? But Okay, that's the I thought I asked that question. Um, okay, what are the most popular neighborhoods for military families around Fayetteville, and why? Um, per se, we don't have. I wouldn't say it's more neighborhoods. No one's ever called me. Say, oh, a few, but a few far in between. Of hey, I want to live in this neighborhood or that neighborhood. Typically, what I get asked is, I want to be near a certain school district, public school district, or even even a you know private school. But usually they're, you know, we're, as real estate agents, if you didn't know, we can't, well, you know, but no, all no. the know that, um, you know, do the fair housing and we can't give our opinions about schools. Um, so the one of the, they're always telling me they usually they want Jack Britt area, Southview, Grace Creek, Pine Forest, Cape Fear High School areas. And you know, that's what they've heard. They've heard those are, those are the, one of the better public schools. So usually I get asked that question or it's easier a suburb. Um, like I live in, you know, I'm in Fayetteville. I work in Fayetteville, but I live in Hope Mills, uh, suburb of Fayetteville. Then there's Rayford, Stedman, Eastover, Spring Lake. And then we've got Harnett County. And I say Harnett County, it's not a suburb, but we've got like a little pockets of towns in Harnett County. And it's it's right next to the base on the north side. So a lot of people like moving out to Harnett County now. Um, not to say Harnett County in general, because there's just uh, about 20 little towns in there, and they're like right. little Mayberry towns. It's like you run, you can run through a stop sign and be like in Mayberry. Next, you know, you're in the next town over. But uh, usually, that's that. Those that are what I get asked: is suburbs, and I want to be near this school or that school. Um, a few far between with hey, I, I, I want to move to that neighborhood. Um, okay. If, yeah. So school district is main driver. Kind of yeah, same with us. School, school district is huge. Um, for Richmond Hill for us is probably one of the better school districts from what I'm told. Um, and it's super close to Fort Stewart, which is right there. And then we get a lot of South Effingham, a lot of people like that school district. And then we got a bunch of private schools down Savannah. So, you know, um, yeah, schools are big for us as well. All right. Okay. What should soldiers consider when deciding living between or living between living on base and off base? Um, things to consider, and what I've heard from a lot of soldiers, and I'll, I'll give you a story of one of, and I have this couple, um, and there are four kids, and she's expecting off, they were living on base, but they're living in like a two bedroom um, house or, or apartment on, mm -hmm. on, on, yeah, yeah, on, on, on the base, and, and, you know, she's expecting. So their oldest daughter was living in the, her bedroom was the living room. They didn't have yeah. a living room anymore. 
So she's there. The other two kids are, are sharing rooms and then she's, you know, she's expecting two. And they were just telling me, you know, it, it's, you know, obviously it was horrible living like that. He lived that for almost a year. Um, wow. You know, so, you know, and, you know, we'll go into reasons why it took him so long to get off base, but, you know, he had some credit issues, stuff like that. But finally, we, we got him to a house and they're a lot happier now. But, you know, that was one of the problems. And, you know, I was like, man, they, they didn't have nothing else for you. They said, that's the biggest thing they had for us at that time. So, and then I heard there's a waiting list. I heard six months to a year to get on base. Obviously, with rank and things like that, I guess, you know, obviously, you know, you can pull your rank and get, you know, get a little quicker, you know, things like that. But, you know, with, with that, and then some of the homes on, on base are, are a little older. So a lot, lot of, you know, issues with, you know, with maybe mold, mildew. I don't know for sure. I'm not saying there is. Right, but, right, right, right. You know, so. The Army don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had, uh, I remember when we first moved on base and, um, shoot, I think it was like 2003, right before we went to Iraq the first time. And we lived in this, it was like 800 square foot townhouse thing but it was only me and my wife so mm -hmm. it's like a, like built in the 40s or something like that this thing was old as dirt right oh, yeah and then it's they started here. putting up all the new houses but there was a waiting list like you said to get on the new houses so it was a pain in the butt um i think they got it better now but i mean i think for us it's just better i mean in my opinion that's what i'm telling the soldier I'm like if you can afford to buy a home buy a home then you can have built equity and all that good stuff that we talk about as real estate agents right Oh yeah, and I, with your BAH, I mean, I, I mean, if you can do it, live off base, um, you know, and and definitely, you know, the the, the BAH is going to pay for your, hopefully, pay for your all, all your mortgage if if not a good chunk of it. That's that's how I look at it as so. And so, if let me ask you this real quick, James, if someone decides to buy a home and then rent it to go PCS somewhere else, do you get help with rentals and stuff like that? Um, I I would I don't have a property manager team with with our firm, but there are a few um, um, people that I, that I highly recommend. Um, you know that they, so if they're looking to rent, I can definitely put them in the right direction. Of hey, go with this person, somebody I trust, somebody I know. You know, usually it's a, it's a friend of mine that you know I would trust in my own house. So yeah, I, I I don't I don't do it myself. Our firm doesn't have a property manager team, but I do point them in the right direction. All right, sweet, great, great, great. So you're in good hands, regardless. Yes. Yep. All right, good. All right, so what is the general cost of living in Fayetteville? Uh, general cost of living. Um, as a police officer, I, you know, I was, you know, start off, at, you know, we'll say roughly our, our average salary here is between fifty and sixty thousand, and you know, and and that's that's I would say that's probably I'm not live comfortably, and it all depends on everyone's, you know. Um, I lifestyle guess, yeah yeah thank you lifestyle deal comfort <laughs> but um for the most part i mean you could buy a house here um three to four bedroom home between our, our median price range is between between 250 and 280 so with that you're looking at a three to four bedroom home wow. um between 15 to about almost 2,000 square feet and it really depends on the location um you know, we've all heard it. obviously something in the middle of the city compared to out in the outskirts in the rural county air country area is going to be a whole lot different in taxes but you know that's what you're possibly looking at. I showed a couple of homes, some homes today, and their price range is between two fifty and two eighty. And I'll show them how it was two sixty nine, two two sixty nine. It was sixteen hundred square feet, three bedroom, two full baths on a corner lot. Yeah, all brick home. Wow. I mean, yeah, it was an all brick. It, it was it's an older home. It's built in the seventies, but it's been renovated. Look nice. I showed them. And I showed them a town home down the street um, for two eighty. Um, it was a townhome, but it was like 900 square feet, uh, you know, three bed and two bath upstairs, downstairs. So that's what you're looking at getting. And now both of those, they, and he works with the city, um, yeah. you know, and she's a stay at home mom, um, you know, um, so, you know, that's in the middle of the city and that, that, you know, for, for that, that's not, not too bad. You know, that's, so. that's incredible. Like I said, we, we're, we're hard to find anything under 300 here. Like, we got a, I think the cheapest new construction home I could find uh, under three thousand or three hundred thousand dollars was two eighty nine as a, a one thousand twenty square foot home with two bedrooms and uh, two baths. So that's that's like the lowest we could find that's in good condition. Everything else is is it's hard to get into. It's it's been rough prices here in Savannah, mm -hmm. but um, we're getting by and then interest rates are starting is going to come down. So hopefully that'll help us out a lot. I think yeah. that was for us. Did you guys have a huge boom when, at, like, during the COVID time? 
Oh yeah, God yeah yeah. It, it was crazy here. I mean, we it was getting to a point where, we God, you know, we were getting you know ten, twenty, fifteen offers on homes, um, and you know, not that I you know, and I, I was mostly the buying side, so I was. I mean, I remember I was running around town, you know, I was going from client to client to client and, you know, we're offering 10, 15, $20,000 in due diligence money, as I was talking about earlier, um, you know, waving everything. We don't, you know, we're not going to, we're going to do home inspection, but we want nothing fixed. You know, we did, we, we did appraisal gaps here. I don't know if you have those there or not. Yeah. But, yep. You know, we we're doing appraisal gaps. It was crazy. I mean, it got to a point to where if a house hit the market at nine o'clock in the morning, it was in a good you know, good area location. I mean, it, it you know, it, by that afternoon, it could be close to being under contract or they already got 15 offers and you're going, oh man, 15 offers, geez. I mean, you know, what do you begin with that? How do you even advise somebody of what to do there? You're like, oh man. So how is people. it like now? Is it like that now or is people moving there uh, easier to yeah, get in a home? Yeah, it's it's a little easier for the buyers, um, you know, to get a home. I mean, our homes, our average days on market now is about thirty to thirty five days. Okay. Um, yeah. So, not you know, they definitely have more breathing room. But if it's something that's in a, you know, desired area, good location, good price, um, it's it's probably going to go real quickly. Um, like my wife's a realtor too, and we just we just she just closed on her, one of her listings today, and I closed on one last week. And they're both on a market for two days apiece. And we had, she had five officers, five officers in her home. And I had, I had four in mine and one, and one of hers was cash. And, and then I had a appraisal guy, which I haven't seen in three years. I'm like, damn, my wife just wow. got a real estate like, like a year ago. She's like, what's an appraisal gap? And I'm like, here it is. And I'm going to explain it to her. <laughs> so, you know, and we, you know, it's, it's, you know, and, it was great. It was our listings, but we were like, oh man, two days. We we're both of us. We were pretty excited. I mean, it was, it was good. And our clients are happy over asking price for both homes and, you know, big chunks of due diligence money. I mean, you know, we're talking about due diligence money earlier. One of um, hers got 5,000 offered. Mine got uh, 4,000 offered. So that's a, that's a big chunk. Yeah. I mean, and it was, man, that's a huge risk. I just, yeah. that just is insane to me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And the, yeah. um, it's kind of been, you know, slow down. Like you said, the one, the, the nice houses that are in the nice neighborhoods that are, you know, well sought after buyers will jump on those. But, you know, like those ones that need work, you know, that are kind of overpriced, they're not, buyers ain't buying it no more. They, they're not yeah. going $30,000 over, you know, $200,000 over what you paid for two years ago. Those days are over. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like the market is turning, like starting to shift a little bit more towards the buyers. We'll see if interest rates go down in our area. I'm, I'm concerned what's going to happen with housing prices because we can't really afford much more bump up because, I mean, unless wages in our area go up, it's going to be hard for people to uh, enjoy a home. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping that people go in their right mind from now on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely, want to, I definitely want to rate interest rates come down. I don't think they'll come down like a whole lot. But I hope it. I hope it's not so much to where it turns There's back a frenzy out. again. So yeah, it, it go it, it go either way. And typically, right now we got about just over two thousand active homes in the market in our area. And usually, to be a, considered a balanced market, we're usually got four to five thousand active homes on the market to be a balanced market. So we're still in a seller's market here. It's not like you know. I know to I, to me, thirty forty days on the market is not very long. No, you know. Yeah, but you know it's it's still you know you know it, it's it's still a still a you know still a seller's market, so definitely you know supply and demand and you know one on one. I mean, it, you know it, it's you know you, you get more breathing room stuff like that. But I mean, if the house is nice, it'll go quick. So. If it's one you love, you gotta have yeah. to go after it, regardless. Oh yeah, definitely. What market it is? Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right. What are some recreational activities? And amenities near Fayetteville that soldiers and the families would enjoy. Um, we got the Special Operations Museum here. That, uh, that's real cool to check out. It's free. You take donations there, but you definitely get to see World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War there. Um, you know, and, and, and it's a very nice museum um, in downtown Fayetteville. We've got a uh, new baseball, the minor league baseball team here, um, the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. Um, so. You know, definitely want to check out a game. We we, we nice stadium. I think I think it sits about seats about uh, seven eight thousand people. So very cool. Um, 
I think we're I don't know I don't know nothing about baseball, so forgive me, but I think um Hey, it's all right. We got the Savannah bananas, that's what everybody knows us for. Um, and that's barely baseball, so <laughs> but I think we're because we're minor league, we're hooked up with um the Houston um with, with the baseball team. Astros? Houston. Yeah, Houston, yeah, thank you. Okay. So so which is you know kind of cool. And then um we've got a local zip line here. We've got an indoor skydiving place here. Um, so that's kind of cool indoor skydiving place. I mean, so definitely you know how you want to go skydiving, but not go skydiving. It's pretty cool because they got a big wind tunnel in there and then you know blows you all up. So that's kind of cool. Um that'd be good practice for yeah, skydiving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it, the kids love it. The kids all love it. I mean, I they're just, yeah, big old wind, you know, fan blowing at them. They're like, and they're they're, they're flying. So they're they're cool with it. They're like they're just flying. They're like, yeah, I'm flying. It's cool. Yeah. Um, but we've got um, if you're looking for outdoor activity, we got Cater River Trail in Fayetteville. It's um about a it's a four mile tra trail uh, tra trail one way, but it's 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 concreted so you can run, walk, um, ride your bike there if you want to. Um, it's real. It's hilly, so it, it's it's a bit of a challenge. It, it, that's what you're looking for, and um, you know it's going right. Th it goes right through the Kafir River, so you get to see you'll see some wildlife out there and some plants and cool things like that. Um, we've got uh, Raven State Park. A lot of people like going there. It's not in Fayetteville, but it's only about a good thirty minute drive outside of Fayetteville, up near Harnett County. What I was talking about earlier. So I yeah. feel like going up there into Carver State Falls Park also. In both places, I, I I don't know about Carver State Park, but Raven Rock you can. You like to go horseback riding, you can bring your horse out there, you can camp out there, fish, swim, all that good stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And we're only two hours away from Wilmington, um, which is on the east which is on the east coast. So, you know, if you want to go to the beach, there's plenty of beaches right there. Two hours away isn't bad. You can go to the mountains. We're four hours away from Asheville. Um, so definitely, you know, if you want to make a weekend trip out of it, you can go to the beach, you know, or the or the mountains and you know, for the weekend, and it's pretty cool. So all right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So what is your favorite part about living in Fayetteville? Oh, well, my favorite part would be the affordability of living here. Um, definitely. Um, and then another thing would, would be we, we get all four seasons here. So you know, like right now, I think it's like 65 degrees. So it feels great. Um, I'm not going to lie, it does get humid here in the summertime. Uh <laughs> Um, but you know, if if you're looking for, if you're thinking we get snow, it doesn't happen often. I think last time we got some real snow, and I know people, you know, people like my wife was, what's well, it snowflakes last year? I'm like, yeah, that was like, you know, nothing. That was like that was like half an inch of even that. So I don't count the snowflakes. But last time really good snowed here was probably a good three four years. Um, so it doesn't get terribly cold in my opinion. Uh, I think the coldest I've ever seen it was maybe 15 17 degrees here wow. at the most. And that, that doesn't happen often. It's not like every, you know, um, I remember, I think the past few Christmas, I was, I've been I've been sitting outside of my flip-flops 40, 50 degrees, and that's me. That's my jam, flip-flops. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, to me, it's not, you know, 40, I can handle 40. I like 40, 50, 40, 50 degrees. So, that's, you know, everyone's got their own preference. But, you know, at least we get all four seasons. So, you know, we do get mosquitoes, we get gnats and bugs and all stuff. But when winter comes around, it kills them all. So you know, it, it's it's you know, it's it's pretty cool. I, I like I, that's what I like about it. So, all right, cool. And James, what does your uh, brokerage do? Do you guys do anything special that you want to talk about right now for soldiers um, that are PCSing there? Yeah, what, what we do, we're we're, we're partnering with a uh, with a local lender here, um, and. Um, if you if you use us, we give you a five hundred dollar buyer or seller rebate. Um, but you know, and so if you use us, if we if we use our preferred lender, they will offer another five hundred. So you're looking almost up to a thousand dollars in in a, in a buyer rebate. Of course, house has to close on it, but that's money you use towards you know you know closing costs, you know whatever you want to, um, you know at yeah, closing. So definitely that that's that's one of our our specials that, that we offer to our soldiers. All right, cool. And then uh, when I have soldiers, when I uh, veterans or soldiers, typically I'll give home warranty to the ones that are buying because you know how it can get when buy home something breaks. You don't want to be, you know, what I'm saying thousands of dollars in debt and you just bought the home. You know, what I'm saying so. That's kind of what I try to do for our. What we, I call them hometown heroes for us. Uh, yeah. Police, you know, nurses, teachers, all all the ones that do all the the hard work for our community and stuff like that. So. Yeah. 
Well, all right, man. Well, James, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me and telling my uh, my fans about uh, what it's like to move to Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. And if you guys want to hit uh, James up, James, why don't you give your number? Yeah, my number is 910-988-8578. Call me, text me. I'll um, be happy to um, you know, reach out back out to you. If I don't answer, just leave a message, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, contact you back. All right, fantastic. I'm going to leave his channel down in the description with his email, phone number. So if you're moving to Fayetteville, give James a call and he'll probably help you out from what I understand. It looks like he knows what he's talking about. So definitely give him a call and then call him about that due diligence money. That's somewhat different. If you bought a house here, moving to Fayetteville, that'd be something you knew that you have to encounter. And James, mm -hmm. I mean, I, like I said, it's a pleasure talking to you and uh, hopefully we can do business in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for having me on, on your channel, man. I do appreciate it, and, uh, and it was great talking to you also. All right, man. Talk soon. Talk to you later. All right. Don't leave, James.